What's up everybody? My name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So some of you may not know of Mountain and that's understandable as they're still new, founded in 2018. They strive to create innovative premium peripherals and their mantra is reach your summit. They're trying to ascend into gamers' hearts with the Everest series of keyboards. These are customizable modular designs, but you might need to hike into your savings as the Everest Max that we were looking at today comes in at a pretty steep $225.99 in the UK. Now this is their first keyboard launch. If you enjoy what we do here, please consider supporting us for free by smashing that subscribe button down below. So we are taking a look at the Everest Max today, but I will touch on the other two models in the series. You have the Everest Core Barebone for $129.99, which is literally just a TKL keyboard chassis without switches or caps so that you can fully customize it. There's the Everest Core TKL for $134.99, which is the same as the Barebone, but this time it has a choice of Cherry MX switches and keycaps. Essentially just a TKL keyboard with the option to purchase all the additional add-ons afterwards. Then we have the Everest Max with all the bells and whistles, which is the premium choice keyboard that Mountain are offering. This comes with the main TKL board, your choice of Cherry MX switches, plus the modular accessories such as the number pad with four programmable display keys, media dock and palm rest. You can see the heavy inspiration taken from Corsair and their K100 keyboard, IQ Nexus, along with Elgato Stream Deck when you look at Mountain's media dock with the control wheel, the number pad with the four display keys. But is that really a bad thing though? And I'd say not really because Corsair seem to be doing something right. So Mountain are clearly trying to reach the pinnacle by one-upping Corsair with extra features like hot swappable switches and a modular design. So more on that later. I only talk about packaging when it's something special and Mountain have clearly made an effort here to bring you a truly premium experience. If I were to spend over 200 pound on a key Board, I'd expect a good presentation, and that is exactly what we get here. The box is huge with a flip open design, the top houses the TKL board and the palm rests. I then wondered how you get to see the rest of it. <laughs> well, underneath there's a tray that slides forward, and each individual part has its own compartment and its own box. We get the USB C to USB A power cable, and then a USB C to USB C extension lead, the numpad, the media dock, a box of customized options which includes a switch puller, a keycap puller, magnetic feet to extend the height of the keyboard and the number pad as well as one of each of Cherry MX switch type. I really like the fact that they included these since the switches are hot swappable you can test each type to see if you like them first before potentially buying a set. There's also a normal escape key thrown in too. Now aesthetically the keyboard and numpad really look the part. It's a lovely brushed aluminium finish in black but where the keys are it has a lowered stage that has been CNC milled, giving it a great swirl effect. It's industrial looking but classy at the same time and personally I think it looks great. At the top of the keyboard we have Mountain's Peak logo as well as Mountain Escape Key in silver and that's about it. Nice and simple but very effective. Once plugged in we have perky RGB LEDs as well as a 360 degree light bar that's sandwiched between two aluminium faceplates. Of course, you can turn the RGB off if that's not your thing, but it's tastefully done. It just looks great overall. Design-wise, this isn't your average full-size keyboard. Since it's a modular design, it does have a unique look when everything has been attached, mainly because the media dock that sits towards the top of the keyboard, but also because of the TKL-sized palm rest as well. The palm rest is very comfortable with a super soft, supple finish on it. It's magnetic with three non-set feet on the bottom along with cable routing options. It fits well and it doesn't move much either until you lift the keyboard up and then the magnets give way and it will drop off, but I don't really see that as an issue. A huge point goes to Mountain for clearly paying attention to Kit Guru's viewers' comments as the Everest Max has a removable USB-C to USB-A power cable. So some of you probably noticed that when I spoke about 
about the unboxing. I'm really happy about this. A premium keyboard that finally lets you use your own cable if that's your thing. Now the cable that we do get is nice and chunky. It is braided, but the kinks mostly pull out. And I was surprised to see that only one USB-A is needed to power the keyboard and the pass through port. You will need to plug the Everest Max into a USB 3 port though, but yes, there is a dedicated USB 3.2 Gen 1 pass-through port on the back of the keyboard, and I'm pleased to see that too, despite the fact that I rarely use pass-through ports ever. At least it's there if you need it. The USB-C port to power the keyboard is actually partly hidden. It's tucked away on the bottom of the board. So flipping the board over, you can see we have lots of cable routing cutouts, which is always handy. But in the center, we have a recessed area and that houses the USB-C power port. And I like this because you can then route the cable in any direction easily. And another unique design of the Everest Max is the rise of feet. Instead of flimsy flip out feet that we see on most keyboards, this one has magnetically stackable feet that raise the board up along with the number pad. I love this design, it looks awesome and it's incredibly easy to use, whilst also giving you more height adjustment than normal keyboards do too. The bottom caps also have great non-slip rubber on them as well. So we've seen the number pad and the media dock, but how do they connect? Well, there's actually not just one way to pair these pieces with the Everest modular design. We'll start with the media dock. This sits nicely onto the top of the keyboard, but there's actually two positions for it. You can have it in the upper left or the upper right corner. If we take a look at the back edge of the keyboard, you can see there's two USB-C ports on either side, and this is where the dock can be docked. <laughs> in theory, it's a simple design. It slides in between two aluminium plates and connects to the USB-C, but I did struggle with this. I thought it would be easy and connecting it to the left hand side was pretty easy. Line up the media dock between the two metal plates and firmly slide it into place. The right side wasn't so easy and I think the USB-C center pins were just a fraction of a millimeter out. No matter what I did, I just couldn't get the USB-C to connect and sit flush. It took me at least 10 minutes and almost quitting before I managed to get it to seat correctly. Instead of slotting it in parallel to the board, I actually had to angle it and then press one side down first for it to line up correctly and then it would actually seat correctly. This was so disappointing and very frustrating since the other side actually aligned perfectly. Once connected however it's firmly attached and it does work great but more on functionality later. So the numpad has a unique design and I really like that. On the back of the numpad, there's a slider that makes the USB-C and magnetic strip protrude on either the left or the right side. And it looks great, it's smooth to use, and once you've chosen which side you're going to use, it clicks into place so it doesn't retract easily. The reason it does this is because you can have the number pad on either side of the keyboard. There's a USB-C and magnetic docking area on both the left and right sides. I love this because you can free up space for your mouse hand for gaming while still having full control via the number pad just on the left hand side if you want it there. It also makes this keyboard an excellent choice for left-handed users that would actually prefer the numpad on the other side anyway. But that's not all though. If you really didn't want your numpad anywhere near your keyboard, you can use the included USB-C extension lead to move the numpad wherever you like. The only downside here is that the lead is actually very short and I couldn't really place it that far away, but if you use your own cable, then you could get around this. Okay, so what do they do? The numpad has a trick up its sleeve and I mentioned earlier mounting, I'll take on Corsair with Elgato Stream Deck as the numpad has four display keys. So essentially these are customizable macro buttons that can display an image of your choice and do an action of your choice. You can have up to 20 different settings by using the five different onboard memory profiles that the Everest Mac supports. And these can be cycled by using the media dock. I'll go into more depth here when we check out the software. They work great with only a few milliseconds delay before the action actually happens. And my biggest issue though is the angle. Even with the keyboard set to the maximum height, I can't really see the images very well. Whereas the Elgato Stream Deck has a very steep angle so that you can see the displays 
very clearly. It's a shame that these weren't raised up and more of an angle since they're at the top of the number pad with nothing around them. They could have just stuck them at a bit of an angle, like 45 degree angle or something like that. The media dock is where you'll find even more features. It's a fully plastic oblong design with a plastic control dial in the right that has a display in the center of it. To the left, we have five buttons and also our indicator LEDs. Our buttons are for media control, skip forward and back, play, pause and mute. But the last button is actually a select button for the control dial. So pressing this once selects your choice made via the dial and pressing it twice actually backs out to the previous menu on the dial screen. The control dial spins both ways with tactile increments. Each increment will move the selector once. If you move the dial too fast over several increments, the selector will still only move once. So you can't move through the options really quickly if you want to do. This could be seen as a pro as you won't accidentally go past your choice, but it's also a con because if you want to get to something quickly, let's say the volume action, you're not going to get there in time. We get eight options on the dial. Clock, profile select, which is actually how you change between the 20 options on the number pad. We get lighting effects, volume, RGB LED brightness, PC info such as CPU, GPU, HDD, RAM and internet speed. APM shows your typing average per minute. And finally, there is a custom option. All of these can be tweaked via the software. And in use, it works very well. The buttons are nice and clicky with no travel and the dial screen is bright enough to see everything clearly. It's well laid out and not confusing at all, providing that you remember that the select button needs to be double tapped to back you out of the menu. I personally enjoyed having the clock displayed as it's easy to glance down and see it. I think the choices of options are well suited too. The average per minute counter was a nice addition and also having PC info readily displayed was also very handy whilst doing demanding tasks. If for whatever reason you don't want to use the media dock, you do have the option to use the function key to cycle through your media and other things. So function plus one to five is for profile switching. The arrow keys are to change RGB LED effects and brightness, page up, down, home, end, insert and delete for media controls, function and R resets to factory settings and function plus pause enables Windows key lock. Mountain's website has a handy help page called start. Here you can select your device and you can learn all about it, including how to use it and lots of other stuff. It's actually a really good addition as well as being able to download their Basecamp software. So downloading the newest version, make sure to check for firmware updates when you select your Everest Max. The software is fairly basic in design, but it's clearly laid out and it is easy to use. Profiles let you create or adjust new profiles. Lighting lets you select the preset effects and adjust their speed, brightness, color, and more. There is also a custom setting and an off switch too. Key binding lets you reassign all keyboard keys. And here we get to customize the number pad screens. So select one and then choose the function from operating system commands, programs, macros, media, shortcuts, and more. So to change the image displayed, click the image in the right, and here you can choose a default option or you can insert your own. You can also completely rebind the control docs buttons, but to have them work, you must select the custom option via the control panel itself. It is very straightforward. The macro tab lets you create new macros easily. Display dial tab clearly shows you all of the options. You can enable or disable the presets here, change the clock type from digital to analog as well as 12 hour or 24 hour options. You can set the display to turn off after X amount of seconds, display a screensaver of your choice. Finally, settings tab lets you disable certain keys or enable core indicator LEDs, which will set, for example, your nums lock key white when nums lock is activated. Keycap wise, we get ABS double shot caps. Since this is a high end keyboard, I would have liked to see PBT caps, but Mountain clearly wants to try and keep the cost down. They do attract fingerprints and grease since they're ABS, but they're spaced out well with clear font on them. If you want to get really fancy, you can order custom keycap sets directly from Mountain's website, but these set you back up to 60 pounds, depending on the ones you choose. There are some really lovely designs though, I must admit, I did have a cheeky look. Our review model is a US layout, so we do have an extra large shift key, which I actually prefer for gaming personally. We haven't tested a UK board, so I can't comment on that layout. I mentioned earlier that the switch is a 
hot swappable, and I do love this feature. Our model came with Cherry MX Reds, but Mountain also gave us a bundle of Speed Silvers too for this review. I like that in the box we get one of each switch to test out, as I mentioned earlier. You also get to choose your own switches when you purchase the board. Being able to hot swap the switches means you could have Cherry MX Blues for typing, if that's your preference, and then actually swap out your W, A, S, and D, Shift, Control, etc., for say Speed Silvers for gaming if you really wanted to, so you could kind of have the best of both worlds. I won't go into every switch Cherry makes, but our Reds have linear 45G actuation force, 2mm pre travel, 4mm total travel, and I've always loved Reds for gaming, and having them in the Everest Max is no exception. This keyboard is excellent for gaming since it has full N key rollover, 1000 hertz polling rate, and 1 millisecond response time. It's especially good for gaming with the numpad detached because this just leaves you with a TKO keyboard for more mouse room. Swapping the switches out is super easy, no messing around with soldering irons or anything like that. Just use the puller that comes included and they pop right out. Align the contacts up with your new switch and press firmly to insert. This couldn't be any easier and it really opens up so much customization for the user. So Mountain have gone an extra mile too by using genuine cherry stabilizers, Crytox lubricant, clipped spacebar feet for better actuation feel, and even dampening foam to minimize noise. The board is lovely to type on and use because to me it really is quiet for a mechanical keyboard. Each and every key feels consistent, and that's quite something, as I usually find backspace, enter, spacebar, etc., to be totally different from the rest of the keys. There's no rattle whatsoever when shaking the keyboard, and minimal noise when moving over the keys. Let's take a listen to a sound test, and I'll compare it to the Corsair K100 for you as well. Hopefully you would agree, but I'd definitely say the Everest Max is quieter just by a little bit, and I'd even say it feels more consistent in terms of feel. Build quality wise, I have some mixed opinions. Overall, there is minimal flex due to the dual aluminium faceplates. There's no sharp edges. The raised magnetic feet all work perfectly. Everything's great in terms of build quality. My issue is really with the connection quality. I mentioned earlier how attaching the media dock to the right was an issue, which could just be down to my review sample but a shame nonetheless. My other issue is with the number pad's connection. It only connects via a few magnets, and this is fine because they're strong, but they're only fine if you never plan on moving your keyboard. I often shift my board around from left to right or forward and back, you know, because I might be using my desk for something else. If you do this with the number pad connected, it's going to instantly disconnect or fall off. This may be done on purpose to stop the USB-C mail connector from bending or breaking, but I still feel like it could damage over time time. It's also wobbly even on a flat surface if you just gently rock it from side to side or up and down. Of course if you use the USB lead and have the number pad separate this isn't an issue. My last gripe is that the control dial on the media dock does feel a little bit cheap, it's slightly wobbly but that's, you know, just something else to add. Overall, despite my connectivity gripes, I really like the Everest Max. I've never liked the look of modular designed keyboards with clip-on pieces, but the Everest Max has actually changed my opinion here. This is Mountain's first ever keyboard, and they have tried to tackle everything any gamer would want from a keyboard, and I actually think they've done a stellar job at covering all bases with some great ideas. But on the flip side, I feel like they may have tried to implement a little too much for their first time around the block. If they'd focused on a little bit less, they could have maybe made it just that little bit better. I do also think it's a much better value option when compared to Corsair's lineup, which they're clearly trying to take advantage of here. A Corsair K100, IQ Nexus, and Stream Deck Mini will set you back over £400, whereas the Everest Max gives you a taste of all of their features and more for just £225. So what do you guys think of the Everest Max? Did you enjoy this video? Hit the like, subscribe, check out our merch down below and remember to read our website daily. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru, see you later.